Hello friends, welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson and I'm the lead pastor at Jerome Church. I'm so excited to join us for worship this day as we conclude our sermon series entitled Broken. Now in this series we've been looking at Paul's letter to the Roman church and he understood that this, even though he'd not visited this church community, that some of the struggles they were going through because they were growing and spreading uh, in a place that was unpredictable and increasingly diverse. And so in this series, we'll be covering some of the letter's most intriguing and inspiring passages as we learn how God sustains us amid brokenness, both within and without, helping us to find wholeness and unity no matter what crisis we face. Let us now join together in praise, worship, and song. Hello Church, my name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of our online worship together. During worship today, you can use the chat or the comment function on any platform that you're watching on to share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and our online worshiping congregation. 
I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and our online resource that virtually connects you to things like our Connect card, signups for upcoming events, worship videos and resources, kids and family resources, and our online giving platform to support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code on the screen to connect or visit us online at jeromechurch.org slash church dash center. Today we're concluding our series called Broken as we've been diving into Paul's letter to the Romans. So let's hear today's message from Pastor Bruce and I also want to invite you to stick around to the end as we have a special prayer and blessing of the backpack. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. I wanted to start this week's sermon like last week, but with a, a new statement of Chris, uh, Christian truth, uh, a statement that as Christians we believe are true. And this statement is, God is in control. God is in control, period, hard stop. Now, I know with all the brokenness found in the world, no matter how many times we try to wrestle control away from God, this truth still stands. God is in control. You can either believe it or not, but for us Christians, it is true. Now, throughout this series on Paul's letter to the Romans, we've seen how God repairs the brokenness in our own souls through grace and an unwavering, inseparable love. God loved you and there's nothing that you can do about it. You either accept it or you don't. We've seen how God overcomes the brokenness in human relationships, uniting us in Christ as chosen, beloved children of God. God's plan is restoration and wholeness. Paul trusts in this as he sorts through the frustra uh, frustrating divisions between the Jewish and the Gentile communities that are forming, the law and God's grace, and Paul's reflections on the relationship between spirit and the flesh, labor pains, height and depth, and chosenness. Now, yes, it is true, brokenness is still a reality now as it was then. However, even through this, Paul argues that we can trust in God's mission of restoration, that God is ultimately in control. In today's scripture passage, Paul will explain how even with this brokenness, God is still in control. And hear these words from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, and then moving to 29 through 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people who he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel? And now to 29. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Just tell you who were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Paul believes that God is on a mission and God has a plan. Now, we may mess it up, but God works through it all. God calls a people and chooses them. They are disobedient, and God saves them anyway. They are taken captive, and God frees them. God gives the law and knows it will not be obeyed. God sends judges and prophets. God sends the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the rock of salvation, cut out of God's own chosen people, the Israelites. Yet even Jesus is rejected. And even this God uses so that Gentiles may be grafted into the plan of God for salvation. 
God has a purpose and a plan. God is in control. Now, Paul is arguing in today's scripture that even the rebellion of all creation is used by God so that God might show mercy to all. Paul believes God uses the salvation of the Gentiles to inspire jealousy in the hearts of the Israelites. See the mercy of our God and how it extends to all people, he argues. Even this is part of the plan of of God. Now I know it's sometimes tough to believe that God is in control. When I say that God is in control, we then begin to question, why do bad things happen? If God is in control, why do people kill one another in the street? Why is there war? Why do some have so much, more than enough even, while others struggle to survive? Why do we lose loved ones for apparently no reason? Well, my short answer is this. I don't know. Now, don't get me wrong. I could sit up here for hours and preach and talk and try to convince you about why these things happen. And I do believe there are reasons and theories, but ultimately I don't know. I do know that part of creation was God giving us free will and We don't always understand how the way we use our own free will affects someone else and vice versa. I could preach for hours on theories and understandings. But when I reach those unanswerable questions, that's when I have to go back and realize it's as if God created, we brought sin into the world, and God pivots. God brought in a covenant with Abraham. Eventually, God's people were captured in Egypt. God pivoted and brought Moses. Out in the wilderness, God's people complained and moaned. They created false gods. God pivots, gave them the law. When they didn't understand or like the law, he brought prophets. He brought judges. They became corrupt, and God pivots. Every time we pivot away from God, God continues to pivot and call us into a relationship. God adjusts and calls us back. God is still on a mission, working all things for good, for healing, for restoration. This is part of God's grace. We can't do anything to earn it. We simply must accept it. God's plan of mercy and grace and forgiveness and salvation is an act of God's inseparable love towards his creation. You and I, all of our neighbors, all who have the spark of God within them, Friends, we agreed last week that there were certain Christian truths that God loves us and there's nothing we can do about it. God's love is inseparable. And when I preached that last week I, uh, to my congregation, I got amens. I said our job is then to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourself. And people said Amen. If I shouted out, God is in control, that one may be a little bit tougher to reconcile. Yet it's something that I believe, and I believe as Christians we need to trust in, that God is in control. God is on the throne. Christ sits at the right hand. No matter how often we move away from God, God always pivots and tries to bring us back a sign of his love, and a sign of his grace. And so even though we may not understand always the whys or the plans, it's still in this way that we are invited to participate in God's mission of restoration. 
You see, we are to work with God to heal the broken places. The burden is then kind of placed on us as we need to ask, how then do we respond with our lives? Do we continue to try to shift away from God? Are we going to trust that God is in control? Are we going to trust that God's love is inseparable? That his grace is there for all people. His love is there for all people. And are we going to follow our jobs, our mission, to love God, to love neighbor, and to make disciples? Whether we believe it or not, God's plan is still there. Whether we choose to accept it or not, God's love, mercy, and grace are still there. How then are you going to respond with your life? May it be by loving God, loving neighbor, and making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's good to be with you again in worship today. Today we're concluding our series called Broken as we've been considering the ways that God delivers wholeness and unity in the midst of our chaos and brokenness. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome Church. While you're there, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore all of the opportunities in the app, including upcoming events and ways to volunteer in a local mission or grow deeper in your faith by participating in a class or a study. One of the ways that you can join in the work of serving others at Jerome Church is by supporting our Habitat for Humanity and Help Build Hope Wall Build that's coming up next month on Saturday, September 9th. For the fourth year, we will come together during this event as a church and community to build the walls of a family home that will be donated to a partner Habitat for Humanity organization. You can support this year's wall build by signing up to volunteer, or jump in to lead a work team, or you can even support this event financially by making a donation or by becoming an event sponsor. Scan the QR code on the screen to learn more and register or donate for the wall build. Two other opportunities that are coming up this fall include our adult mission trip to Appalachia Service Project, which will be September 28th through October 1st and our Fall Fest Craft and Vendor Show, which is coming up October 13th and 14th. You can learn more about all of the upcoming opportunities at Jerome Church, as well as view the calendar and connect to signups through the Church Center app or by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave us to love God and love people. And you can support the missions and ministries of this congregation by giving a financial offering today. You can give electronically through the link in today's video description on the Jerome Church website or through the Give tab in the Church Center app. And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can connect to our online giving platform by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address on the screen below. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to invite you to join us in a blessing and prayer for all of our students, teachers, educators, and families, and anybody who's going back into a school building as our community returns to school this week. If you are a student and have your backpack or school bag nearby, you might want to grab it right now and join us as Pastor Bruce leads us in our blessing of the backpacks. Dear
Today we have gathered before us backpacks to be carried to and from school by the children and youth gathered today. These backpacks will contain work to be done, work that's been returned, books to be studied, tools to complete homework, notebooks, pencils, pens, protractors, compasses, crayons, rulers, scissors, glue sticks, and other items used for the schoolwork will find their way in and out of these backpacks. Some days, so much stuff will fill these backpacks that students may find it difficult to walk. Other days, they will be light and nearly empty. But on each and every day, these backpacks represent work required of the students gathered here. And as in every aspect of our life, we bring these before God for blessing at this time. So let us pray. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings, and they commit themselves to study and learning in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask a blessing on these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them online and in the world around them each day. We pray as well for the teachers and administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. We pray in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. Have a blessed week, friends. Thank you.